Unfortunately, many games have been lost over time. Most of the time it happens because the hardware isn't supported anymore, like UMDs, or if you're going further back, floppy disks. But other times it comes from a game being delisted. Sadly, if there was never a physical release, then chances are it'll be near impossible to get your hands on the game, save for something like a dedicated fandom hosting private servers. For this list, we'll be focusing on games that were released on the PS4, but not necessarily PlayStation exclusives, as lots of these were released on other platforms. While some of these are still available on Xbox or PC, or in some cases there's a physical copy out there somewhere, these titles are no longer easily available on Sony hardware. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 rare and delisted PS4 games you might own. Number 10, The Legend of Korra. The Legend of Korra was a sequel to the well-loved Avatar The Last Airbender show, and much like Avatar, Legend of Korra had a tie-in game too. Sadly though, this game is a horrendous mess, only causing frustration and pain. It takes place between seasons 2 and 3 of the show, but has parts of season 1 shoved in. Because of this, the whole plot is a mess, helping the game beat the live-action movie as the worst Avatar-related media ever made. The Platinum Games effort was delisted from the PS4 store on December the 21st of 2017. Fans of the show have been clamoring for a game that actually makes them feel like the Avatar, yet all we got was disappointment, something the show actually has in common with the game. There were no physical copies made of the game, so it can't be played anymore, which is the only good thing we can probably say about it. Number 9, Jade Star's Victory VS Plus. The game anime fans wish Jump Force was. Before that, we actually got good games based around anime crossovers. J Star's Victory VS Plus was one of those. Also, it was a PlayStation exclusive, though sadly it was taken off the store. It has 52 different characters from 32 different jump series. Being an older game, there's no Deku or All Might in this one, but it does have characters from Psyche K and Dr. Slum. You get a lot of variety in the characters, and there's fun and engaging combat. Sadly, this game was lost to us in 2018, with no real reason discussed as to why it was delisted. It does still have a physical copy, so if you can snag one, then you can still play it and get the jump force you wanted. Number 8. Battleborn Gearbox's new game was hyped to be amazing. A shooter with elements of multiplayer online battle arena elements was a fairly new idea at the time, but unfortunately it wasn't the smash hit people wanted. Overwatch came out just a few weeks later and unfortunately overshadowed Battleborn completely. It had better graphics, simpler controls, and was easier for newcomers to just jump in and play. That and poor reception caused the Battleborn player base to quickly dwindle. A few months after release, the game had less than 1,000 concurrent players. This is compared to the 12,000 at the launch of the game. On the first anniversary of the game, the player base could drop below 100, and it was practically impossible to find a match. The game eventually went free to play similar to Brawlhalla with a rotating cast of characters. The game was then delisted in November of 2019 and the servers shut down in 2021. A sad tale of a game with so much promise. Number 7. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2 Marvel Ultimate Alliance was a Diablo-like game originally released on the PS2. The first game had around 140 different superheroes and supervillains to play as. It was well received and even got a sequel, and fans were ecstatic when it was announced that it would be getting a remaster. Then out of nowhere they were Thanos snapped out of existence on every store and console, including the PS4s. It seems Activision had lost the license to Marvel games, or it had expired, which is also why you'll see two more Marvel games on this list. Activision has made a ton of licensed video games, but they never seem to care about renewing the licenses, causing many great games to be lost this way. Yet there is a small saving grace, and that's Ultimate Alliance 3 being released on Switch. The series still continues, but hopefully the originals will come back. Number 6. Godzilla now this is an interesting case for a couple of reasons, one of them being that this is the only game on this list that's only partially delisted. You can still buy this game if you live in Japan, it's known over there as Godzilla vs, and for some reason it hasn't been delisted, at least at the time of writing this article. While it came out around the time of the movie, it's not connected in a story sense at all, it's actually an original story created for the game. It's essentially a kaiju beat-em-up with playable characters including Godzilla and other classic monsters from the Godzilla franchise like Mothra. You can still get a physical copy for the PS4, but unfortunately, no physical copy ever arrived for the PS3, so that one is lost forever. 
Number 5. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 was one of the biggest disappointments in gaming. Then Cyberpunk 2077 came out and people forgot about every other buggy game released. Pro Skater 5 was coming out in an age where we'd seen a ton of already trash skating games and unfortunately, this one did not break that trend. In fact, it became one of the worst skating games ever to be created. It was hated even more than Tony Hawk Ride, the one with the barely working Wii skateboard. Since the last good skating game was Skate 3, there was a lot of hype around this game. There were many reasons why this happened. One fault that it's buggier than Skyrim. Another is that the studio didn't even have a grasp on the game, changing the whole art style three months near launch. Yet another fault is just that it wasn't fun. There's no official reason why this one got delisted, but no one would be surprised if it was because of its poor reception. Number 4. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 the Amazing Spider-Man 2 was the first and last game on the PS4 before Insomniac's game. Like a lot of other Marvel games, this one was lost when Activision lost the license to Marvel characters. That and the game isn't the best, to say the least. There is a lot of potential, and if you play it right after Insomniac's effort, you can see obvious inspiration, which is also its biggest problem. It has all these great ideas, but with terrible execution. Also, the graphics were somehow worse than the first game. In fact, pretty much everything in this game, the original Amazing Spider-Man, did better. The film is still considered one of the worst Spider-Man movies of all time, and given this one didn't do a lot right, not a lot of people missed it when it was delisted. Number 3. Deadpool Deadpool was originally released on 360 and PS3 only to be delisted from all stores. Activision then made a remastered version of the game and put that on all stores, and then that version was delisted from all those stores too. It seems no matter what form of media Deadpool is in, it just can't catch a break. This is yet another one lost to the Activision licensing issues. The action hack and slash game released in 2013, and the Merc with a Mouth was voiced by the famous Nolan North. Humorous and a fun time waster, Deadpool came in at around 10 to 20 hours of gameplay. Essentially, if you liked Deadpool, you would have loved this game. If you want to play this one today, you'll have to fall back on physical copies. But thankfully, it was once available on 360, PS3, Xbox One, and PS4, so there's plenty of copies in the wild. Number 2. Transformers Devastation This is the last game on our list that was lost because of Activision's licensing agreements. It's also one of the most beloved games no longer available. All of the Transformer games were lost along with it, including War of Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron. Devastation had gorgeous cell shaded graphics similar to those of the Borderlands series. With fun gameplay and an original story, it was a genuinely enjoyable time. You could tell Platinum were big fans of the series, including a lot of the tone featured heavily in the IDW comics. Hell, you could even fight in vehicle form. Do you know how fun it is drifting into somebody and causing mass amounts of damage? Why is this not in every Transformers game? Number 1. P.T. This is likely the most popular and well-known entry on this list. P.T. was released on the PS4 store as a random demo. It eventually turned out to be the continuation of the Silent Hill series. The game gained massive popularity because tons of YouTubers and streamers were doing Let's Plays. Also, it's Hideo Kojima. People were especially hyped because Silent Hill Downpour didn't get the best reviews, but all it took was Hideo Kojima falling out with Konami for the game to be taken off the PlayStation Store. If you do have this one installed on your PlayStation, never delete it. Otherwise, there's no way to get PT anymore, other than playing a fan recreation. It is unfortunate that this game and all others on this list will never be sold or continued again. No matter how bad a game is, it's still sad to see the work of studios get completely erased. Here's hoping that all of these games will see the light of day again at some point. That's the end of our list, but do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other rare or delisted PS4 games you reckon some people might own. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonnell, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great gaming lists.